it was just pretty much all the time. I started in 76 in the music business, um, learned, had great teachers, didn't have a number one record till 82, which would not happen nowadays at all. They'd, they'd already passed you by and you'd had 10 other people in your place in that amount of time. And then when, but I kept learning and I had great teachers to have patience to teach me. And when we got to a point where I was like, you know, I think it would be better if we did this. And they'd say, no, nope, we don't do it that way. So I would just bide my time and wait until I could say, okay, now I've, I've got the resources. I want my own, produ my own promoter. I want my own booking agent. And I've got my own manager. And I don't want you to manage anybody but me. I don't want you to promote anybody but me and book anybody but me. Got individual attention. And I think that was one of those things that really did a kickstart to reinvent and to make things happen that way. Uh, also, when I started finding my own songs, Jimmy Bowen was the one that said, uh, I'm, I said, I'm not happy with what the way the direction is going. And I said, what do I do? And he said, uh, I think you need to start looking for your own songs. I said, how do I do that? Because I had gone to him and said, I don't like an orchestra. I want a fiddle and a steel. That's what I grew up with. That's my kind of country. But reinventing myself, I think the big step was going into any get your gun. Because I had toured, I'd done every dog and pony show you could do, three ring circus, I changed clothes 15 times, I had 10 dancers flying around me, and we had done everything we could on that aspect, on that frontier. And so when we were going to Europe to do the TV show Star Sings the Beatles, and we flew our plane up to New York, we're gonna get on the Concorde, and they came to us and said, your flight's been canceled because a catering truck backed into the door and tore it off of the Concorde, so our flight was canceled. Too weird. Nobody could make that up. And so Narvel said, what do you want to do? I said, let's go see a play, because we always go to plays in New York. And he said, why don't we go see Annie Get Your Gun? They've been asking you to do that for a long time, and we did. And at intermission, I looked at him, I said, I've got to be on that stage. And that was April of 2000, and we started clearing the schedule of 2001, open for me to be able to do that. 